Now, time really is running out to finalise a post-Brexit trade deal, a task that was made even harder this week after the EU negotiating team was forced to self-isolate due to a positive coronavirus test. Well, joining us now from Paris is the French MEP and the former Europe Minister, Nathalie Loiseau. Thank you very much for being on the programme. How optimistic are you that we're going to manage to strike a Brexit trade deal? Uh, Sophie, I have to say I'm a politician. I am neither optimistic nor pessimistic. I am committed. Uh, we will do everything we can in order to have a good deal, whether it is possible uh, under this time pressure that you mentioned. Honestly, I don't know. I cannot tell you uh, it's a done deal. Uh, I will not tell you we're almost there because there are still big divergences. But being committed is the responsibility I have and I'm happy to carry. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it does feel that time really is ticking down. Uh, we spoke to Simon Coveney uh, on the programme last weekend, Ireland's foreign minister, who said that the last week just gone was, in his words, move week. So has anything actually moved this week? Um, well, I'm not the negotiator myself, so I will not speak on behalf of Michel Barnier. Um, some things uh, made progress, and Ursula von der Leyen said it a few days ago. But you know that we are still waiting for clarity. Uh, what are we waiting for? We want to build a strong partnership. And I think that the British side does want it as well. We need it on both sides. And if you want to be strong partners, you need to have clarity on the prospects, on the initiatives that your partner is going to take in the future. Uh, and this is what goes under the umbrella of this strange world of level playing field. We need to know what sort of uh, environmental standards you want to have, uh, what uh, are the way you're going to protect your workers, because we are offering an unprecedented uh, partnership with the UK and for very good reasons. Uh, but this comes with clarity, with commitments, and so far uh, they are missing. Uh, and I think it's really time if we are as committed on both sides to reach an agreement that uh, uh, things become clearer. One of the other big sticking points, of course, is fishing. A big deal here in the UK, but a big deal where you are in France as well. After Brexit, isn't it right that British fishermen and women should have access to more of the fish in British waters? Nobody is denying that the waters have, are becoming British. But nobody forgets that the common fisheries policy uh, so far has been a success. It's provided with sustainable fishing and uh, decent incomes on both sides. Why should we ruin something that works? Uh, let us try to find a solution which is sustainable, balanced, long-term, so that fishermen on both sides don't pay a price for a decision which was not taken by European fishermen. At the same time, though, you can see why fishermen and women in Europe might think that the common fishing policy has worked. But if you speak to people in Aberdeen or in Hastings or in Whitstable, as I have during the show, they certainly don't think it's worked. They think that their industry has been decimated because of it. Well, they were choices which were sovereignly made because UK has always been a sovereign nation, and that's good. Um, and in terms of processing uh, the, the fish products, and you know as well as I do that British fish products are being processed in the European Union. This is something that has to be considered. Uh, I think we should work on reciprocal access to waters as well as reciprocal access to markets. It's in both interests of the British and the Europeans. So let's fix it. It's interesting because if a deal is agreed uh, that French fishermen don't feel gives them enough access to British walkers, there's been to waters, there's been talks of blockades in Calais. Do you think we could see disruption? Well, uh, I think that it will not happen because there has to be a satisfactory uh, fisheries deal. If there is to be a, a a free trade agreement. This is the European mandate which was given to Michel Barnier. And you're mentioning France, and thank you for that, but we are not the only fishing uh, member state in the European Union. And as you know, uh, fisheries is a European policy. So uh, this is something that is shared by all member states, has been from the beginning of the negotiation and has been repeated throughout the negotiation. 
And it is not intended to hurt anyone. On the contrary, it is intended to prevent workers to be hurt by a decision, Brexit, which is supposed to provide for a better future for the UK. Well, we could discuss it, but I'm not discussing it right now. But it is not supposed to hurt people on the, in the European Union. We are partners. We are not there to be adversaries for our future. I think this is the worst thing that we should do. And may I say as well that I would definitely like some UK politicians, some British politicians, refraining from using uh, rhetorics or a vocabulary as if we were adversaries fighting against each other. We are struggling to build a strong partnership for our future. This is what we owe to our fellow citizens on both sides. Talking about disruption, um, where we, how we have just been, I just wonder what do you think the consequences of a no deal may be when it comes to disruption at that crucial border you know, between Calais and Dover, particularly at a time when, of course, many people are worried about the distribution of vaccines? Well, there is absolutely no, do, no doubt that a no deal would have bad consequences. I do hope that the British side is ready even for a deal, uh, because I'm reading and hearing that even with a deal, uh, as there will be uh, customs control, sanitary controls, there are still questions and concerns from British businesses on the level of readiness on the British side. But let us, let's admit that uh, things are going to improve. Of course, a no deal would have bad consequences on the short term. But let's be clear, a bad deal would have bad consequences for the long term. And a bad deal is a deal. And when you sign it and when you ratify it, you're committed to it. So uh, I really uh, support a good deal. And I think it's feasible even if time is running out. But I'm not saying that there is no chance that there could be no deal. Uh, this could very well happen. Um, thank you very much for coming on the programme this morning. Uh, time, of course, ticking to get that trade deal sorted. We'll have to find out what happens in the next week. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.